Some websites store information about you or your computer in a small file called a cookie. The cookie is stored on your hard drive. Sites that run Google Analytics issue first-party cookies that allow the site to uniquely but anonymously identify individual visitors. So when a visitor returns to a site that runs Google Analytics, the site is able to remember that the visitor has been to the site before, and Google Analytics will only count that visitor once in unique visitor calculations. There are two types of cookies. First-party cookies are set by the domain being visited. Only the website that created a first-party cookie can read it. This is the kind of cookie used for Google Analytics tracking. Third-party cookies are set by third-party sites, basically sites other than the site being visited. Users can choose whether to allow some, none, or all types of cookies to be set on their computers. However, if a user does not allow cookies at all, they may not be able to view some websites or take advantage of customization features. Cookies can be set with or without an expiration date. This detail is important in order to understand how Google Analytics tracks visits and unique visitors. Persistent cookies have an expiration date and remain on your computer even when you close your browser or shut down. On return visits, persistent cookies can be read by the website that created them. Temporary cookies do not have an expiration date as they are only stored for the duration of your current browser session. As soon as you quit your browser, temporary cookies are destroyed. While it's impossible to determine the exact number of web visitors who have cookies enabled or disabled, available statistics suggest that the vast majority of visitors enable cookies. Many kinds of sites require that visitors have cookies enabled. For example, you need to have cookies enabled in order to log in to many online shopping carts and to use webmail. First-party cookies, which are the kind used for Google Analytics, are allowed by a majority of visitors. Cookie tracking makes it possible to correlate shopping cart transactions with search campaign information and perform other visitor analysis. Remember, websites only have access to the information that you provide. Websites can't get your email address or access to any information on your computer unless you provide it. And since Google Analytics only uses first-party cookies, Google Analytics cookies can only be read by the website that created them. Google Analytics sets the five first-party cookies shown in the slide. The UTMV cookie is optional and will only be set if the setVar method is called. You will learn about setVar in the module on custom visitor segmentation. All of the Google Analytics cookies are persistent except for one. The UTMC cookie is a temporary cookie that is destroyed when the visitor quits the browser. Each of the other Google Analytics cookies has an expiration date set in the future meaning that the cookie will persist on the user's computer until it expires or until the user deletes it from their computer. Here's an example of the cookies set by the Google Store. You can see that UTM-A, UTM-B, UTM-C, and UTM-Z have been set. We'll learn more about each cookie shortly. First, let's try a brief experiment. Which of the sites that you've visited are using Google Analytics? To find out, open your browser's cookie window. You'll usually find it under your browser's options or preferences. Now, in the cookies window, search for underscore underscore UTM. You should see all the different Google Analytics cookies set by all the sites that you've visited that use Google Analytics. All cookies are browser specific, so if you've already been to a site, but you open a different browser to visit that site again, another set of Google Analytics cookies will be set. Now, before we continue, search for the Google Store cookies by typing the domain name googlestore.com into the cookies search box. If you've never visited the Google Store, go to googlestore.com now so that cookies are created. Select the Google Store UTMA cookie. In the cookie information, note the content and expiration date for the cookie. The first number in the content of every Google Analytics cookie is called the domain hash. It represents the domain that you visited and that set these cookies. Google Analytics applies an algorithm to the domain and outputs a unique numeric code that represents the domain. Each Google Analytics cookie set by the domain will begin with this number. The next number is a random unique ID. The three subsequent numbers are timestamps. They represent the time of the initial visit, the beginning of your previous session, and the beginning of your current session. 
The timestamps represent the number of seconds since January 1st, 1970. Notice that the last three timestamps are the same. What does this tell you? The last number, the session counter, can give you the answer. The last number tells you the number of times you have visited the site. This number will increment each time you visit the site. The session counter here is 1, and the last three timestamps are all the same because this is your first visit to the site. The random unique ID combined with the first timestamp make up the visitor ID that Google Analytics uses to identify unique visitors to the site. These details allow Google Analytics to calculate the number of unique visitors and the number of visits. Look at your Google Store UTMA cookie. How many times have you visited the Google Store? If you think you've visited more times than is indicated by the cookie, remember that the cookie only includes the number of times you visited from this computer using this browser. Also, if you've cleared your cookies at some point, it is only counting from the last time you cleared your cookies. When does this cookie expire? You should see that the date is two years from the last time you visited. The UTMB and UTMC cookies together identify a session. The content of the UTMC cookie is simply the domain hash. The content of the UTMB cookie will also be the domain hash plus, if the site is using GA.js, some additional values. The key difference between the two cookies is that UTMB is a persistent cookie with an expiration date that is set 30 minutes after it is created, while UTMC is a temporary cookie that is destroyed as soon as the visitor quits the browser. Let's review what you know about a session or visit in Google Analytics. First, note that the terms session and visit are used interchangeably. A session is defined by 30 minutes of inactivity, or if a visitor quits the browser. Each time the visitor navigates to a new page and the JavaScript in the Google Analytics tracking code is executed, the UTMB cookie is refreshed and set to expire in 30 minutes. This is how a session can be two hours long. As long as the visitor remains active on the site, the session remains active. But if the visitor stays on a page for more than 30 minutes, the UTMB cookie will be destroyed. The next time that the visitor loads a page, Google Analytics won't find a UTMB cookie. Instead, a new UTMB cookie is created. And from the standpoint of tracking, this is a new session. So, why is the UTMC cookie needed? Let's say a visitor quits and starts the browser and comes back right away to the same site. Since the UTMC cookie was destroyed, Google Analytics will know that this is a new session. So, to summarize, when the visitor loads a page, the JavaScript in the Google Analytics tracking code checks for both the UTMB and UTMC cookies. If either one is missing, it notes this as a new session and creates whichever cookie, UTMB, UTMC, or both, was missing. Note that it's possible to adjust this behavior. With a small customization to the Google Analytics tracking code, you can make the session timeout length anything you want. You'll learn about this in the Code Customizations module. The UTMZ cookie stores the campaign tracking values that are passed by a tagged campaign URLs. So, for example, if a visitor comes to your site on a link tagged with campaign variables UTM source, UTM medium, and UTM campaign, the values for these variables will be stored in the UTMZ cookie. Preceding the campaign tracking values, you will see four numbers stored in the UTMZ cookie. The first number is the domain hash, as with the other Google Analytics cookies. The second number is a timestamp. The third and fourth numbers are the session number and campaign number, respectively. The session number increments for every session during which the campaign cookie gets overwritten. The campaign number increments every time you arrive at the site via a different campaign or organic search, even if it is within the same session. The UTMZ cookie has a six-month timeout, meaning that a visit will be attributed to a particular campaign for up to six months, or until the UTMZ cookie is overwritten with another value. You can modify the six-month timeout, and you can change the rules which govern when the UTMZ cookie value is overwritten. You'll learn how in the Code Customizations module. The UTMZ data shown here would show up in your All Traffic Sources report as coming from the source slash medium Google slash organic. Now, in your browser's cookie window, select the UTMZ cookie from your visit to googlestore.com.
Assuming that it was a direct visit, you'll see UTM-CSR equals direct and UTM-CMD equals none. Your visit will show up in the Google Store's Google Analytics account as coming from the source slash medium direct slash none. The slide shows how the values in the UTM-Z cookie map to the campaign variables. For example, the UTM-CSR value in the UTM-Z cookie is the source, or the value that was assigned to UTM source in the tagged link. So, if you reached somesite.com via a tagged URL that looks like this, then the UTM-Z cookie would look like this. The UTM-V cookie is for custom visitor segmentation. You'll only see this cookie if the site calls the setVar method. This cookie contains the domain hash and one other value, the value you assign using setVar. For example, suppose all site visitors who log in get set to member, while those who do not log in remain unassigned. The Google Analytics account owner would then be able to compare members to those who are not set and see whether, for example, members convert more often or spend more money on the site. The UTMV is a persistent cookie that expires after two years. Try searching your browser cookies for UTMV. Any sites that appear will be those that use the Google Analytics custom segmentation feature. Refer to the module on custom visitor segmentation to learn more about SetVar and the UTMV cookie.